like I mentioned, we have a jam-packed show. What we'll do is uh, we'll start with uh, uh, marking out to uh, our new friends on YouTube. Yes, sir. Let's do it. We went ahead and we did a, a little bit of networking. We got a total of 31 or 32 friends with eight subscribers. So the rest of you, I don't know what the hell's your problem, but get on the bandwagon here. Let's get on it. Uh, so a quick shout out to uh, AJ Hedrick, 15, the sharpshooter, which I uh, seen his uh, some of his videos. Pretty funny guy. Has a Jamaican accent. <laughs> Called himself uh, the real Kofi Kingston. Nice. Uh, Lucky Seven Point Man. Joe Snitsky. Sorry. Joe Snitsky. Uh, J. David CC7. My personal favorite. I want to mark out to Wrestling Jesus. That guy is solid gold. Yeah. Uh, some guy named Sugarman133. I don't know who that is. Oh, yeah. Wink, wink. And uh, Diddy City News. Nice. Those are, are the subscribers. The rest of you guys, uh, you'll get a shout out as soon as you join. That way we know that you guys are listening. We uh, are going to go through Raw Review. We're going to go through uh, shoot through the ECW, Superstars, and SmackDown. Uh, we got a lot of stuff in the news. A lot of stuff about the Lakers. And uh, finally, we'll go into uh, race picks with the USC uh, coming up uh, tomorrow. We also got TNA's uh, Slammiversary. Beautiful. On Sunday, we'll do with Ray picks. Let's see, what else? Uh, yeah, so we'll just go into Raw. Raw, three-hour show, three for, uh, what was it called? The uh, three for all, all three championships up for grabs. Overall, how do you think they did? I thought it was really good, man. It was a very exciting show besides that Donald Trump crap, but it was a really good show. I think I think they tried. I, I really think they tried, and that's all I'm going to give them is that they, they actually tried. No, 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 no. I Re thought they did a lot better than the last couple Raws that they had. They did, you know... Uh, I don't want to give them too much credit because it's the same crap that I've seen before. But I mean, it's it's the same feuds. I I kind of agree, but at the same time, we saw a little more happening. We had Santino in the backstage instead of Randy Orton. He was doing a little gimmick with um with Vince McMahon. You also had a story being built up with the Divas Division. You had a lot of cool stuff going on there. Yeah. So the show opens up with uh, Michael Cole and Jerry King Lawler announcing that Vince McMahon has a uh, was in the building and he was going to announce the new GM, which he never did. No, um, like always. Uh, there was, he's going to be making an announcement. Uh, so everybody thought that that was going to be the uh, the big news. Uh, so right away, right off the bat, instead of having a, a in ring build up stage, which they kind of did, you know, they 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 kind of flirted with this one. Uh, they started it off with the Chris Jericho versus Rey Mysterio match for the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, Chris Jericho comes out and cuts a promo in the beginning of the... Which was super great, man. Super great. You think so? I mean, Chris, Yes! You know, Raw is nothing without Jericho. I, I you know, I want to point out one thing, another exposure spot right here, right now, which is uh, two months ago, Chris Jericho cut a promo saying that he would never appear on Raw again. Well, oh, I mean... Yeah, I mean, that sounds like crap, but... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's kind of bad for his image. There but at the same go. time, at the same time, you can't you can't disagree with saying that Raw is not the same since he's left. Uh, well, you he know... He brought Raw's ratings up when he came back. Uh, let's face it, Jericho... I wasn't watching Raw for a few months until he came back. Jericho is a ratings grabber. He will... Whatever he does, whatever match he is, he will pull in the ratings. He will bring the viewers. I love it. But in this case, it kind of made him look bad. Yeah, but come on. I mean, how many times do WWE say something and then turn around and, you know, and they change in the last minute? Or, you know, they always do stuff like that. You can't blame them. So uh, the match, uh, I watched the match, the beginning of it, uh, without TiVo in it. I, I tried to give it a chance um, because Jericho and Rey Mysterio, come on, I've seen it uh, for about three weeks in a row now. And, um, yeah, it's it's getting kind of lame. That feud is getting kind of lame. And uh, you know what? To tell you the truth, uh, Ray looked like he had a, uh, some energy. You know, this time, right? Yeah, he did look good for the last couple of weeks. He looked like he wanted to leave, but because you know, rumor saying that he is done, pretty much. But that is just strictly rumor. He needs to go somewhere where he can be pushed again. Uh, you know what? I think uh, to keep Ray Mysterio interesting, turn him heel. Why not? That would be exciting. I would love that. He hasn't been healed since he's been um, in the uh, 50 Animals in the WCW. Yeah. So but will that hurt the WWE? He is one of the top-selling merchandiser. He sells the most. I don't think so. I think so. Every time I'm over 
in any live event, anytime you watch TV, you see a whole bunch of Rey Mysterio masks, T-shirts, everything. I still see those little hoodies around. Yeah. Well, like I said, and I watched the beginning of the match, and uh, this, the match started off very, very sloppy. And it wasn't Jericho's fault at all. It was uh, actually Rey Mysterio not hitting his uh, spots. Yeah. Uh, he missed a lot of, uh, what was it, uh, some kind of kick. It just made yeah. it, it just looked really bad. He but, looked really sloppy. But at the end, they went ahead and they kind of made up for it. But um, what happened was Jericho catches Mysterio and grabs uh, and tries to grab the mask and try to take it off. That allowed Jericho to uh, hit the cold breaker. And that match took 9 minutes and 39 seconds. Which was good. Pretty good. We've been complaining that the matches are short, and that, that match is pretty long there. Pretty good. And I do want to bring out that this is a intercontinental championship that lasted, om- it almost went 10 minutes. Yeah. There's another championship that I'm going to be bringing up in a little bit, and it was horrible. And I think everybody knows what I'm going to be talking about. But right after this match, Josh Matthews uh, joined Randy Orton for his thoughts. John Cena interrupts the, the uh, interview, dismissed Josh Matthews. Cena, sarcastically in a reported voice, started to kind of clown on Orton and that maybe all that oil was uh, rotting his brain. <laughs> you know, a, a nice little comedy spot. But it's right back to the top for Cena, right? Yeah, right back to the top. I think there's no choice now because of the uh, the ongoing injuries that Batista is suffering. Right. And I thought uh, Kenny Anderson... it's kind of sad because now we're we're going to we're going to possibly or we're going to lose a Miz and Cena feud. Yeah, you know, well I think John Cena has no choice to go back on top because Batista's ongoing injuries, you know, and I thought Ken Anderson was worse. Oh, yeah. So there you go. Point in case is that uh, rumors that Ken Anderson is injury prone. Yeah, look at look at Batista, which really I don't believe that Batista this time is injured. More on that later. But so they went ahead and they cut to another backstage uh, thing saying Vince is here to announce the new GM for Monday Night Raw, and that he was going to announce that he sold Monday Night Raw to a man to be no, uh, pointed out later. I was a little disappointed with that whole thing. Lame. Here's the match I'm talking about. It was the second match right after the Intercontinental Championship. You had a, uh, a pretty good match in the beginning of Raw, and then you're going to follow up with the ECW Championship match, Christian versus Tommy Dreamer. Right. Okay, so a championship match, a heavyweight championship match, right? Uh-huh. Usually is about 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Christian starts kayfaving a, a uh, knee injury about maybe, I don't know, within just seconds of the match. Tommy Dreamer uh, rolls him up in a small package for the pin. The match only lasted three minutes and 25 seconds. That's including the injury. Yeah. That that just goes to show you that how, how much they care about ECW. Yeah, I'm telling you that brand's kind of shut down, man. And w- when did we start having a, a a title match that ends with a small package? I don't know. They don't care about ECW. They don't. It, it's it's dead. And it shows. And it shows how much they care about Tommy Dreamer. Yeah, that's that's what kind of crappy match is that for Tommy Dreamer? That's kind of disrespectful to both Tommy Dreamer and Christian, especially Tommy Dreamer. Yeah, as a champion. Exactly. They gave him the title. They gave him what he wanted. And then they're going to give him a crappy little match like that? Yeah. On a major show that's supposed to be pulling in some big ratings? It's horrible. Horrible. So already, so far, I'm not liking Raw. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to disagree. I still liked Raw. I didn't like that match, but I still like what was going on. What made me fall more into the dark side of not liking this show whatsoever was they went ahead and they cut a backstage promo, which was a waste of time. I mean, you got the Bellas, the, the Bella Twins, which right. they're, I think they're smoking hot. Nah. Kelly Kelly, I think she's smoking hot. Oh, Kelly Kelly. Um, um, you know, they they talked about who was going to, who bought Raw and the possibilities. One of the dumbasses, oh, they, uh, they actually suggested Perez, uh, Paris Hilton. <laughs> that actually would have been funny, though. I mean, come on, you know, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Are you kidding me? Are that's, you? Are that's you, WWE, man. Is, is this really happening? That's what it was going in my head. I, Jesus Christ! WWE can no longer hold himself based on what they do, wrestling or entertainment. Now, you know, they I, used to do it. The only time they draw in big, big numbers were on like. WrestleManias for all these 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 um, athletes and movie stars and all that crap. It's the only time they brought those people in. 